So a question you'll see a lot is, how do I know if my fuel pump is bad? And with a mechanical pump, that's pretty much straightforward. You just put a gauge on it and check how much pressure it's putting out. As long as the engine's running, it should be putting out a steady pressure. How do you check a fuel pump that has a three-line interface, one is the return line? How do you check if that's okay? How do you know if it's returning too much fuel? Well, one way is to put on a fuel pressure gauge and see what the pressure is. And if it's too low, either your pump is bad or your bypass is bad, but you don't know which. How do you know which one is bad? Is it the pump or is it the bypass? Let's find out. So this is a Chevy small block with a mechanical mechanical fuel pump that is cam driven. And I have taken the liberty of adding a shutoff valve to the return line. And I've added a fuel pressure gauge before the fuel filter and carburetor. And so right now I'm going to open the valve. And you'll see we are starting at zero fuel pressure. And I'm going to crank the engine up. And you can see we're running at about 3 PSI. Now 3 PSI is a little low for the spec. You should be running about 6 for, you know, everything I've got here. Um, standard mechanical fuel pump, you're looking for about in the range of somewhere around 6 PSI, plus or minus. So we know either the fuel pump is bad or the bypass is bad. Now the fuel pump is still putting out some fuel pressure, but how do we know if the pump side is good and the bypass is bad? And why? Why is that important? Well, let me show you. Since we've got a shutoff valve, I can shut this valve off. And you can see the pressure slowly climbs up into the five region. And again, if I open it, it'll drop down. Now, I've got the valve shut. Let me shut the engine off and show you what happens. So the engine is off. So right now, we've still got our pressure reading. So I'm gonna open this valve and watch the gauge. As you can see, it drains quickly when I open it. So what's happening is, I'm gonna close that again so I can restart it. So what's happening is all the fuel pressurization and everything slowly bleeds back through the pump and back into the return line and back to the tank as it's sitting. Of course, the longer it sits, the more fuel will drain back through that return valve. Because the return valve is either bad, or it's stuck open, or both. And so it's basically open all the time. So when the pump is running, half your fuel is going back through the bypass as it runs. And, of course, when I close the valve, then all of the fuel has to go to the carburetor. Now our pump could be a little weak. Uh, as you can see with the valve closed and no bypass, it's still up in the 5 PSI range. So our bypass is bad. The fuel pump may be weak, but it'll still work for our purposes. And that's why the engine runs okay, because it's still full filling the fuel bowls. Now if I put the hammer down and really suck a lot of fuel, it's probably not going to do so well. And historically this thing doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't pull great up at really high RPMs. It'll pull okay, but it's running a little lean on the high end. Anywho, it's probably not anything to do with fuel pressure. I think that's how I have the carburetor jetting set up. Anyway, so the bypass is open all the time. Now, I can shut it off. Now, uh, old pumps don't have a return. Old mechanical pumps are just a two-line setup in and out. And I believe, if I recall correctly, that they added the return line later to prevent va vapor lock and all of those things. And uh, basically, it's also got a pressure regulator in there. So, you know, it doesn't overpressurize, uh, which generally isn't a problem with these things. But I guess GM was running into some issues mainly with vapor lock and uh, not having a path for excess pressure to escape back when it was sitting hot and the fuel boiling lines and overpressure and it had no way to escape. Can't start the carburetor off. Vapor, you need to start it. It needs actual liquid because it needs to flow downhill 
and vapor won't flow downhill through the carburetor passages. Oh, I also want to note, I added this one-way valve on the in-fuel intake line to the pump. Um, I do that a lot of my vehicles just to prevent fuel bleed back, because sometimes they sit for a month or something before I drive them, so I like to have fuel right away if possible and save my starter and battery, so in this case, I can run this pump, since it's a weak pump, I can run it with no return. And since I have a valve in there, if I do get vapor lock, I'll see it on the gauge and I can open the valve and bleed that back to the return and then close it again. So with this setup, I don't have to spend the $30 on a new fuel pump and the time and energy to do that. So instead, I spent, you know, $50 on parts and brass fittings to do this. <laughs> but I also wanted to demonstrate exactly how to tell if your fuel bypass valve is stuck open. Now, of course, when I'm done with this and I replace the fuel pump, I will remove the gauge and I'll remove the valve and uh, put them back in my toolkit. But this is a good demonstration of a quick way to tell how your uh, pressure is holding up. Now, another way to tell, you don't need this gauge. You can do what I did, close this valve, start the truck, disconnect this line at the return, shut the engine off, and if you open it, and uh, you basically get a whole bunch of fuel out and it just bleeds down to nothing, then probably your bypass is bad. The bypass should hold some pressure, at least a couple PSI in that tube. Now, if you bleed it off and it stops coming out and you close the valve again, you can tell if the upper line is pressurized by just disconnecting the upper line from the carburetor or whatever arrangement you have up here and seeing if any fuel comes out th up there. And if it does, that means it held pressure in the upper line and the lower line. But if no fuel comes out up here after you've uh, opened the return passageway, that means it bled down to zero. I hope that was clear enough, but uh, just wanted to demonstrate how you could do that without a fuel gauge. So, yeah. So I know mechanical fuel pumps aren't used a lot anymore, but people still want to know how to troubleshoot the old stuff. And these days we have some younger people coming into the hot rod community and, you know, they want to know these things too. So it, it's just good knowledge to have because if you ever encounter a mechanical fuel pump with a return, this is a quick way to troubleshoot it without knowing if you have to actually pull the pump and, you know, take the time to replace the, the gaskets and everything and that could be a pain. So quick way to diagnose and troubleshoot that. Hope this video helps somebody out. That is why I make videos. I appreciate all your likes, comments, subscriptions. Share the video if you feel so. That would be great. And as always, thanks for watching. People around here don't believe in mufflers. Good gravy, he's just giving it full send down there at 25 mile an hour. So I was at the store the other day, and like I sometimes do, I wander around and randomly look for new Dr. Pepper products. I'm sure you do that too. No, nobody does that. And I found Dr. Pepper cotton candy, which I didn't even know existed. I mean, I'm not a big fan of cotton candy, but I'm a fan of Dr. Pepper and, you know, I like sugar, so let's see what it's like. Hmm. They do give you a lot of it. Oh, nice Dr. Pepper color. I like that. Hey, Dr. Pepper? Mm -hmm. Mmm. Oh, that does taste like Dr. Pepper. Oh, that's good. That's good. I recommend it. I haven't seen it since. Mmm. Mmm. Melt in your mouth. I'm guessing this is maybe a limited time thing. I don't know. But uh, I'm sure you can probably order this online, unlike perishables like ice cream or cookies or something. But. Oh, yeah, that's good stuff. Mm. Mm. Whenever I need a dose of sugar, I know where to go now. Oh, yeah, that's good. Mm. Delicious. 
Like I've said many times before, I don't endorse Dr. Pepper because they don't sponsor me or anything, but I just like it. You know?